Now when it rains, I get excited. Whereas before I go, oh, damn, my plans are ruined. That's because I'm using that rain to live off of. <laughs> So here's my tiny house, which I built, which I'll get into in later videos. So we have a gutter that has a nice gradual slope. Okay, so the rain drips into that pipe. Right now it's just filtered with a mesh screen. That's where that, that Tyvek tape um, is just holding that screen. I gotta figure something a little bit nicer out. I didn't install a typical uh, first flush. All right, now it's starting to rain a little bit. Maybe I'll speed this up. I didn't install a typical first flush um, because after some research, a lot of people really, you know, advise against it for a number of reasons. But I did want to separate it in case I decided to build one later when I was using this for drinking water because right now it's not for potable water. Whoa, look at that. Let me wipe that. Uh, I can flush that, open that, and empty that and it's not gonna go splashing everywhere. All right, and it drains right into my tank. I just secured this to my house with some white strapping, screwed it into the three inch PVC. It's all three inch PVC, uh, this part of the system. Um, you can kind of take pictures and look at the fittings I use, but it depends on where your tank is and where it's coming from. We're going right in. Okay, so I just drilled a hole in my 500 gallon tank. Okay, so this is for winter. So I set up the solar panel, which is a solar aeration system. So that keeps the water moving. It'll help it from freezing. I just drilled a little hole in this lid. And I also drilled a little notch right here um, for when it's really cold. And this is a de-icer that I just dropped right in. My overflow, inch and a half PVC pipe. I put another little screen on the bottom, so I didn't want any bugs climbing up in there either, right? I sized my system, the 500 gallon tank, uh, based on my roof surface area and how much water I was gonna use and how much rain I got in my area. I shouldn't ever need that overflow. I should, if I'm living in this house full time, get exactly what I need and never run out of water and never have too much water. Now, into my fittings, the juicy part. So this looks like a bit of a shit show, and it is. Couldn't find uh, a singular piece to go to a three quarter inch fitting that eventually moved into the hose. So I had to get several adapters. I had a giant leak, uh, so I can't even show you the adapters I used, but I had a giant leak, so I, it, it was one of those things. Different cements, different tapes, eventually, I got it to stop, but it doesn't look so pretty. I'm probably gonna change that. Probably could have got something on Amazon, but I just wanted to use the local hardware store. Um, and that's a shutoff valve. So that's three quarter inch shutoff valve. Had to adapt it to three quarter inch garden hose. So right now it's on, but if I ever need to do maintenance, I can turn that off and do so. Um, this is all uh, potable braided tubing, a heated, cable um, which I taped on to this hose throughout the system. This is thermostat controlled so it really is only going to go on if it senses the temperature to be below a certain degree. So that's a little spin filter. The pump goes on when my tap turns on inside. It goes under here. Okay, a little twist. Oh, there it is. See, that's the stuff. Then it comes up. And right now I just have it in a standard RV filter. I do want to invest in a better filtration system. Um, you know, one that uses multiple layers of micron filters, ceramic filters, maybe a UV light filter so that I can drink this water. This connection right here, it's the same braided pipe, have that insulation going up and that twists right into my water inlet. Okay, so it's not perfect yet. This is actually the first rain it's seeing, but I wanted to share it with you. And uh, yeah, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about it. There it is. And uh, I'll post another video soon.